Welcome back, and today we are flying out an absolute cult classic, the P-51 D-30. Been requested quite a few times, and I can't really introduce this as well as my friend Tommy the Thompson does. So I'm gonna do him the honors to just kind of explain what this plane is like. B-51 must have won the war. It won the war. Did you know that the P-51 must have won the war? Uh, back in my day, the P-51 must have won the war. Thank you very much for the introduction, the P-51 indeed won the war and I kind of just wanted to put this on my channel in case that clip ever gets deleted because it's just an absolute classic. Most of you might probably not know this because he's a very old YouTuber, unfortunately kind of inactive for us anyway, fortunately for him because his mental health probably couldn't be any better. I'm gonna link him in the description anyway for the people that want a nostalgia trip, but for today we are gonna be looking at... The P-51 Mustang that won the war. Of course, it's a little bit over-exaggerated, but it's still a very good plane. At 5.0, you have good speed, you have a decent climb rate. The maneuverability is there. However, you do need to be careful that you don't go in the sub-300 to sub-260 kilometers an hour ranges. This plane is good at being fast and staying fast. This thing does not excel at low-speed fighting, but you can dogfight people as long as you stay above that Roughly 300 kilometers an hour, the faster the better, but just try to stay above 300 and you should be completely fine. Now for today I have a few games, the matchmaker is very rough, very hard to play and it was kind of hit or miss, most of the games were like 1v6s and I mean it's kind of painful to play in that regard because this is not a plane that can simply dogfight everyone at once. With this thing you need to be a little bit more conservative and you need to think a little bit more. You can't take every fight, you can take a lot of them, but it's dangerous because if you get caught slow you are probably going to die. And yes this goes for most props, but as I said this thing is pretty mid when it comes to stall fighting and anything that gets near it. So we got on this uh, I-225, made him compressed by going a little bit faster than him. And the 225 of course is notoriously bad at being fast. While at the same time it being our biggest strength. So, you know, 1 plus 1 is 12. It's really just that easy. Now, the guy above us actually broke off. He went for someone else. And we are going to fly towards the middle of the fight. We go head on with this 1 and 9. And the second we get around head on range, we're simply going to break off. I wanted him to stick this fight as long as possible. I knew it was a K4 simply because he was killing some ground units as well as some AI planes. So I saw him in the kill feed. I know it was a K. So I wanted to make sure that he took that head on and basically stalled himself out. And as long as we have speed, we are maneuverable. He doesn't have any speed. He is very good at low, low speeds. However, if you go low, low speed in front of my gun, you're probably going to catch some 50 cal. So we kill him, we break off and we are going to climb away to kind of counter that 190 coming in on the right hand side. But then the ME410 comes in. Now this is not really a main threat. However, in a group setting I don't want to deal with all those guns. And now he is kind of alone and he is excluded. So I want to kind of just stall him out. Do the same thing we have been doing basically all game. Go up over his nose. The second he goes slow enough we pitch straight into him. And we are simply going to hose him down. Now I do want to be careful of the 30mm. I'm not going to recommit. But we don't have to because he's on fire. And he is dead. You can see the 190 on the other side of the map. On the left hand side. And we need to break off a little bit. Need to kind of see what we can do. Unfortunately the 190 actually kills my friendly. And starts coming my way. So now we are boxed in. They are coming from two directions. Both of these planes are also good at being fast. And believe it or not, the 190D wins the dogfight at low speed versus the P-51D30. Mainly due to the engine power and the retention. Those planes are very good at about 300 km an hour when it comes to maintaining energy and generating energy. This plane does not. So we want to kind of avoid getting into a dogfight with them. However, because of their position, mostly their altitude position... And the way they are spread out. This is going to be borderline impossible. So I'm going to try to bait them down a little bit. Since they are together. They are in a squad. And I do want to be somewhat careful. However I need to do something here. And as I say every time I'm in this kind of position. If you don't take any risk. When you don't have the initiative. You're going to be worse off than actually taking a bit of risk. So I'm trying to bait these people into going for me. I'm worsening my position. But I'm on the clock. The team is... Completely gone. Their team is definitely not. And unfortunately they don't stick. They actually break off. And they kind of yo-yo behind me. And re-engage me. Which is bad for me. Because they are just holding their ground. 
and effectively draining my balls here by simply doing nothing. The longer I wait, the bigger the discrepancy becomes because I just can maintain the speed and they can maintain diving on me so they can maintain their higher speed. When Einti comes in, he wants to go head on. I'm not going to be taking that. I dodge him, keep eyes on the one on top, reverse the one below us, and I have to take this. I'm too slow, I'm outnumbered, and I mean, he had to break off that. He should have just broken off, and I then couldn't have gotten the shot here. I maybe got on that shot, but I couldn't have followed up on it because I'm now stalled out. He is stalled out. That other guy had much more speed. I would have been dead right about here, and I would have ended with zero extra kills. However, because he actually took the head on and he took a 50 kill directly to the brain, he and his squad mate both ended up eating a dick. Now, he is on fire, and I don't really trust fires on 190s, but I'm gonna have to because the I-225 is now also closing in. We are also here with a damaged engine and we aren't doing very hot in that regard because it's just going to make our climb rate just that little bit worse. Now I was going to ask them something like can I land, decided not to because it's only an I-225 but then another 190 rocks up. And I still have the first 190 on my 6 that has been, well, burning. He is definitely not going to be a major threat but already being in a 2v1 versus two planes that outperform me at low speed and I now have a damaged engine. They are going to be catching me. This is going to be a low speed fight. So it's basically game over. Unless they completely throw it. The 190 luckily plants it into a tree. And we are going to try to extend for a little bit longer. Because the 190 is faster than the 225. Which means if I wait a little bit longer. They are going to be directly next to each other. And I can turn into both of them. With the same maneuver. But I notice that the 190 isn't really getting closer to him. So I shoot in the head on. No souls, unfortunately. I just don't hit enough rounds. I then dodge the 190. We go up and over. Try to keep eyes on the 190. But I also need to make sure that the I-225 doesn't end up on our 6. They are both going vertical. And at this point, it is completely jovial. I might be able to get a single shot in. I just don't have the engine power. And I'm kind of forced to go vertical here. Because if I go down, this 190 just instantly shreds me. And this way, I might be able to get another shot on the I-225. Now, if my engine here was actually working properly, I might have been able to get away with it. But there's also a third guy coming in. I wasn't able to clean it up fast enough. And now I'm in a little bit of a pickle. So we try to go underneath the 190. Make sure that we kind of just dodge his gun. So we don't get sent back. So we focus on Wyvern. Because Wyverns even in this thing are hella annoying. They're still faster than you. And they will be able to run away for the rest of the match. I don't want to deal with it. What is their advantage? Linear energy retention as well as top speed. Funnily enough, that's the exact same advantage that I have versus the 109F4 that's directly above me. I'm trying to bait him into a high speed fight. Now this is not a fight I am very keen on winning because he has more altitude than me. He is slightly diving on me. He's going to be faster than me. And he simply outperforms me in every metric when it comes to something like a dogfight. And what does he do? He simply breaks off. Now initially I thought it was because of the airfield and he might think there is AA next to it. But he actually DM me afterwards asking, what did I do wrong? You had advantage, you had initiative, you could have very easily killed me. And yes, I am faster, but in that kind of position, I'm not able to actually outrun you. You let me breathe, you let me get a little bit of extra altitude, and you actually engage someone else. So now the energy is kind of equalized. However, in an equalized manner, in a head-on dogfight, I'm still gonna eat shit. So I'm gonna dogfight him, he does the first wrong move there, he goes down a little bit, and then he goes up. And because he went up after going down, he simply didn't actually create a loop. What did he do? He simply, in the loop kind of sense... Kind of flew straight for approximately 5 to 6 seconds. And just let me turn into him. Now we crit the SU-6 on the way there. I mean it's an AI, it doesn't really matter. But I hope that you saw that I didn't actually outturn him. He asked me how did you outturn me when I had more energy and you are in the P-51. Because you didn't turn. You kind of just, you know, flew away from me. Flew down, started a loop. And then halfway into that turn, you started a second turn into the other direction. Kind of nullifying all the turning you did beforehand. Now, this game here, we are going to fight some Wyverns. We set the first one on fire with a single of 50 kills. Because luckily, Wyverns are absolute torches. However, I am now going only about 300 kilometers an hour. And Mr. 1200 Hispano Rounds is about to rock in. And he manages to hit us center mass. He crits both my wing roots and he shoots off a flap. Now the flap doesn't really matter, because this plane 
sucks at using flaps. You don't want to use flaps in the war in the Wyvern in the P51 basically ever. Well, you don't want to use them in the Wyvern either. But with the P51, you want to kind of not touch your flaps unless you have a very advantageous position and you simply want to turn in. But if you want more of that, I have a whole ass dedicated video on that stuff just talking about flaps. But right here, I'm fighting for my goddamn life and you are expecting a funny cut. But instead, I'm going to use the terrain to get directly behind him. Now, I almost get the shot there, but not quite. But now we're relatively close. He is not going that fast. And I am simply going to be spraying him down because I need to R to be anyway. So I'm not really going to be ammo conservative. Now we set him on fire, as Wyverns do. They are dragons after all. They like uh, breathing uh, fire, you know, that kind of stuff. Haha, <laughs> hee hee, I'm absolutely hilarious. He is also going to headbutt a tree as well as a mountain. We repair, we land, and we are instantly in, well, kind of a bad spot because another Wyvern comes in. Now luckily, he comes in and he actually tries somewhat dogfighting me. However, because he is in a Wyvern and he starts on my six. It's actually kind of annoying to get rid of him without going into a bit of a raid fight. Because the Wyvern actually loses so much speed that, well, you guessed it. He's essentially going to be air breaking you and kind of sitting behind you. I try to cut my web so I can actually start reversing him. But he breaks off and he kind of keeps the pressure on this way by simply always going to be there and not taking the fight. And I know what kind of player this is so I instantly know that I have to take my chances at killing him. There's only three enemies left. Or four enemies left. I need to kill some people fast. And otherwise I'm simply going to lose. And I I need to make something work here. And the Wyvern is just going to keep running away from us. So I'm going to try to bait him. Into actually coming back at us. Chasing a guy that's faster than you. Will not make him turn around faster. It will simply not happen. You see that he's running. He doesn't want to fight. If you're going to stick on his ass. He is not going to be committing to you. And you want him to commit. If you want a chance to win this game. So I'm going to let him dive on us. We reverse him yet again. And he is simply not going to take the fight. Yet again. And now I'm starting to understand. What kind of directions he is flying. Now I get a crit in. It doesn't actually do any significant damage. Since you don't see any damage thingy on the bottom right. We get some more hits in. And now he's probably going to be even more passive because he is damaged. So I'm going to try to get some more long range shots in. He is somewhat maneuvering. I'm simply hoping that he starts dogfighting a little bit or dodging a little bit. So that I can actually catch and shoot him down. However, this guy is absolutely committed to the cause of being faster. And that's all he's going to try to do. So I'm going to somewhat fly away from him. See if he can turn around again. He doesn't. But then... He does a little bit of a turn and I think well maybe I can catch him because the Wyvern just loses so much speed in those kind of maneuvers. But I can't. And at this point I have basically given up the game. The Wyvern is just going to run away and if I wait long enough the enemy is going to close in. And here is the first one. It's the D30. Kind of mid just the turn there. Wyvern starts turning around now because I'm in this fight. I'm on the D30, so I'm, he is going to be the least of my worries as of right now. I need to Spitfire that, because that means that I can actually dogfight now. He goes head on, he does the right thing and tries to dodge. However, he doesn't really dodge properly and ends up using 50 kills. We merge with both of them at the same time. And who do I want to engage? Believe it or not, it's actually the Wyvern. And I want to make this Wyvern turn around by pretending to go for the P47. However, the P47 kind of flies into the wrong direction. However... The Wyvern is kind of climbing and this means that I can in the horizontal aspect kind of close in the gap. Now he has more energy and he will outrun me if he dives properly but he goes a little bit too steep. He tries to dive a little bit too fast and I get within gun range for a little bit. And you saw he started outrunning me just at the last moment here but he isn't within gun range and all I need to do at this point is hit him a few times. I'm hoping for that one shot fire of course. But I just need him to maneuver a little bit. Because I am reaching the point where he is damaged enough. To the point where he's barely faster. And if he moves at all. He's going to lose a lot of speed. We then hit quite a few rounds back to back. And now it's done deal. The P47 is not within gun range. The Wyvern isn't fast enough anymore. So I just have the ability to kind of shoot at him for the duration of the rest of the match. Of course I am getting low on ammo. And I shot way too many rounds at that Wyvern. But that Wyvern needed to be gone. I cannot fight a P47 with a Wyvern around. Because if I do so, I am simply going to die. And now I merge with the P47. We next the last second to go under his guns. And he has been smoking for a while now. His engine is probably not doing too hot. I do want to keep my eyes on the Wyvern. Because I don't want him to simply glide over here and hose me down. 
And you can tell the P47 has been smoking for a while now. His engine isn't doing very hot. And he's getting out vertical by a P51 that had less energy than him. Or less altitude. He should have had more energy than me if his engine was working properly. And that's a fight that I normally wouldn't take that way. Because going vertical with a P47 in this thing most of the time is not going to end very well. At least not with the D28 and the D30s. Of course with the D25 and the Razorbacks you can get away with it. But I still recommend you to kind of keep that 350-ish kilometers an hour at the minimum. And the best case is trying to go into a raid fight. The issue is that these fights take very long to complete. And time is mostly not on your side when it comes to this plane. Because you are going to be outnumbered. And a raid fight, if you get interrupted, guess what? You are going to die. Luckily, he had some engine damage. So we are able to fight this way. He kind of flies like a D25 at this point with that little bit of damage. And you see that we just have a very easy time cleaning him up. Other than the fact that our guns do absolute piss all. And we just have to continuously hit him until we promote his plane into spare parts. The P-47 after all did not win the war. The P-51 did. And I know I don't have to hear the comment about you taking that serious. I'm just going to be preemptive about it. Because I, I can't wait to read it if I hadn't actually said this. And that's the game. A lot of wyverns, but yeah, there you go. That's the, the DM actually from the, the dude that I mentioned with the 109F4. If you are watching this, well, I hope it was at least somewhat helpful. And then for the last game here, it's kind of a, a mid-match. Uh, nothing really happened, but this is a match where my team is actually doing somewhat well. But everyone is kind of fast-ish and my guns aren't really doing too hot. And this is mostly going to be about target prioritization and simply deciding when and when not to actually bait anyone. Yak 9 u is a fight I cannot win. However, I have much more energy than him. And I'm in a good position. He's not going to be able to pull after me in that kind of maneuver. And because he actually breaks off, because the P63 comes in, I'm now going to have some shots on him. Now that is very scary. And if I misjudge his energy by about 20 or maybe 30 kilometers an hour... I'm dead. The margins are very small because the Yak 9U is a much better plane in a dogfight. Even if I have the energy advantage, if I go prolonged and I don't crit him early enough, I'm still going to lose. I get some hits in. I get a crit in even. Doesn't seem like too much damage. So I'm just going to kind of leave him around for my team to, to kill. Instead, I'm going to go straight and shoot at the 109. Now we only get some hits in. We don't actually do any significant damage. And... Two guys on my six that are severely damaged. So I'm going to go for the Wyvern. Because the Wyvern is extremely annoying to deal with. Now the Wyvern gets absolutely dunked out of the air right in my face. So we turn around again. And we get engaged by the A point in his 109F4. Now is he going to turn after us? The answer is yes. So I'm actually going to take this fight right now. Because if I don't, guess what? I'm going to have a bit of an issue. The longer I let that guy near me. And the longer I let him turn after me. The bigger my problem becomes. However because he goes for someone else. I'm able to shoot him down. And that's why sometimes you have to take the fight. That you might not win. But when you have teammates around. You can actually support each other. By actually engaging him anyway. And you might be at a disadvantage. But hey. You, he is outnumbered. He needs to do something quick. And if he picks the wrong person. He simply dies. Another assist on the Yak-9. And then we find a Typhoon that's essentially stalled out. And we send him back to the hangar as well. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you all for watching. The P51 won the war. And you'll see me in the next one.